वेलकम टू दिस एपिसोड ऑफ द हरप्रीत सिंह शो थोड़ा मेरा साथ होंगे मंडे टू फ्राइडे सवेरे अठ तो लैके नौ बजे तक मंडे टू थर्सडे रात को दस तो लैके ग्यारह बजे तक सैटरडे दो बजे सांझ पाने दोपहर में दो तो लैके तीन बजे तक रात अठ तो लैके नौ बजे तक थोड़े नाल पॉलिटिक्स इकनोमिक स्पोर्ट्स लाइफ स्टाइल हैल्थ इशूज़ और उस तो अलावा स्पिरिचुअलिटी बारे हर रोज़ डिस्कशन करते हैं आओ अज के इस प्रोग्राम के सैगमेंट में मुलाकात करवाने सू हैमन लाल ये पिछले लंबे समय तो नाइनटीन नाइनटी वन तो ही एज एम एल ए वजों ये सर्व कर रहे हैं सरकार में भी इन्होंने एज ए मंत्री भी काम किया तो उस तो अलावा हूँ एन डी पी के जो ओपोजिशन पार्टी है उस वि वेमेन इशूज़ के क्रिटिक हैं आओ इन के संबंध में कुछ जानकारी लेने इन्हों को लो कि किस तरीके ये अपना रोल निभा रहे हैं तो कि मेजर इशूज़ ने जोड़े अज जिस पर गौर करने की लड़ है वेलकम टू द प्रोग्राम थैंक यू वेरी मच आई नो यू डेंट अंडरस्टैंड मच वॉट आई सैट इनिशियली थोड़ी थोड़ी येस दैट्स राइट थोड़ी थोड़ी ओके सो सू आई जस्ट टॉक अबाउट सिंस सिंस नाइनटी वन यू हैव बीन एज एन एम एल ए इट्स अ लॉन्ग टाइम a uh, little bit about yourself to our viewers everybody knows you but still across the country people who are watching this program being in public office what does it mean to you well it's um it certainly changes your life <laughs> because you um you don't have a regular life right. like you you do a lot of different things every day and your hours are often quite long mm -hmm. um but you but you are challenged uh i tell people that Politics is the most challenging challenging job you can get. Mm -hmm. You're challenged physically, um, socially, emotionally, intellectually. Right. Everything you've got to be able to function on all four cylinders. Mm -hmm. You do policy work, and you have to be sure that if you suggest a policy that it's good, right. it's thought through, and it's good for the community you're serving. Mm -hmm. um, and so. It's it's a uh, it's a pretty um, challenging job, and I would recommend it to anyone. Mm -hmm. Now, again, public expectation is quite high, and despite the best efforts of the politicians to do the maximum, many a times they don't get that credit also for that. What do you feel about that? Uh, isn't it a more of a thankless job kind of thing? Um, no, I don't think it is thankless. Mm -hmm. I think that. Uh, the misconception is that people think that politicians are better than they are. Right. And we're not. We mm -hmm. are, in many ways, just a reflection of the community itself. Right. So I'm, um, I'm a woman. I'm a teacher. I'm an ordinary person. Mm -hmm. I do all the ordinary things that everyone else does. And what we can't do is have expectations that are un unrealistic about our politicians. They will make mistakes. They mm -hmm. will falter. But they need to pick themselves up and keep clear about who they're serving. Right. And I think if politicians can continue to be clear about what they're doing and why they're there, mm -hmm. then people will have faith in them in individually and more as a group. Right. That's great what you have said, that uh, you have, you're a reflection of what is the society. That's true. Now, you have served in various capacities in the government also. And while you were in the cabinet also, you took lots of measures. But one of our major foundation was about Minerva Foundation. What was that? And why did you start that? Oh, that's, a, that's, an interesting, that's an interesting question you should ask me. Minerva, the Minerva Foundation is a foundation for the women of British Columbia. Mm -hmm. It um, focuses on leadership, right. economic um, security, and mm -hmm. safety. Right. Minerva started out as a foundation that was largely run and worked with um, by women, for mm -hmm. women, and has since branched out where it has men and women mm -hmm. on its board of directors. And I think that's a great idea. I think it, because then I think you're, you're richer in terms right. of your conversations around the issues of men and women, and women in particular. Mm -hmm. But Minerva is supported strongly by the business community. Right. And it came into being because I was on the road when I was the minister, mm -hmm. and it was very clear to me that women wanted um, a, a vehicle which they could grow and become better through, right. knowing that government can't do everything. Mm -hmm. And government can't do everything. Right. And what government needs to focus on is giving a hand up. Right. We were talking as women more about helping women move along the ladder. Mm -hmm. So may, maybe someone who was already an executive becoming higher in right. terms of that executive mm -hmm. and learning to use their um, potential. Right. 
in all aspects of life. So that required to some extent mm -hmm. that it move somewhat out of the government right. realm. And so I, um, in my ministry, when I was a minister, mm -hmm. we did a feasibility study right. to see if such an idea would work mm -hmm. to begin with. It did. The feasibility study came back as yes. Mm -hmm. We found an amazing group of women, um, Nancy McKinstry, um, a whole bunch of very, very, uh, Liz Welsh is another, right. amazing women mm -hmm. who then took the concept, okay. um, took the feasibility study, took the idea, and flew with it. <laughs> and right. it has been now going for 11, 12 years. Right. It is a major foundation for women in British Columbia. Right. An amazing success. Okay, that's wonderful. But on the other hand, we also find it's all across Canada, despite the fact that men and women today, there's no difference. But when it comes to the pay structure, we still find that women are not at that level, and this has been much talked about. How do you feel about it? Well, I think, it's, I think the observation is correct. Mm -hmm. I think that, I'll give you an example. I was talking with a colleague of mine who uh, is now t working at the University of Victoria. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you um, get, talk about your pay as, as a professor, mm -hmm. you tend to uh, negotiate it individually yeah. rather, as, rather than as a union or a faculty, right? right? And women often undersell themselves. Mm -hmm. So they undersell themselves and they're over, um, they're undersold by their employers. Right. Sometimes employers think, well, if it's a woman, I can pay less. Right. And what we have to do is just continually work Create on that. Create that awareness. Yes, and mm -hmm. we need to talk about pay equity when it's, when it's um, realistic. Mm -hmm. Men and women should be paid mm -hmm. equal for work of equal value. Right. I think that's a given. Right. And when you think now that so many women, mm -hmm. so many women, are in the workforce supporting their families just like men are, right. then it's to the advantage of the family unit mm -hmm. that um, there's appropriate pay. Right. And uh, so uh, you're also very passionate about Aboriginal issues also, and you served as an executive director on the board of uh, uh, this. So uh, what is the condition right now, and uh, uh, what do you feel, what can be done more for the Aborig Aboriginals? Oh, the Aboriginal community in all, all throughout British Columbia needs um, needs to be supported in mm -hmm. terms of their um, their moving forward in terms of an economic agenda. Right. Um, when you look at the statistics, say mm -hmm. you look at the statistics around um, violence against women, Aboriginal women are twice as likely to right. be, um, you know, experience violence than, than non-Aboriginal, and mm -hmm. yet Abor women in general. Right. Uh, you can... We just have to look at the fact that there's 500, I think, and 86 missing yeah. Aboriginal women right. in the country of Canada. Mm -hmm. And we have um, some areas where mm -hmm. it's uh, strongly Aboriginal community where there's huge, huge unemployment. Right. Now, having said that, we also have, on the other hand, mm -hmm. some very powerful and um, skilled Aboriginal groups like right. the Soyuz Indian Band, where mm -hmm. they're economically very strong, right. very strong producers for mm -hmm. their community and the community around them. And so our goal as um, uh, as British Columbians mm -hmm. is to move everybody up. And that right. is um, a group of people that have to be, um, they have to move forward with support. But I, I say if any of us mm -hmm. had been colonized, like right. the First Nations people mm -hmm. in British Columbia have been, we would also be struggling to, right. get, to move forward. Absolutely. Great. Uh, that shows your passion, how much you are involved in all this. We'll continue with the discussion. Let's go for a small break. And when we come back, about your role as the women critic and what all is the situation right now. And if uh, the government is formed by the NDP, what all you will initiate. Because definitely, if the government is formed, you will have a birth in the cabinet also. We'll ca talk about this. Hontak jis vishit isi galbaat kiti Sue Hamill 1991 to hi as MLA serve kar rene. Ate is jis tarah ne dasya ke ina da mukh maksad Minerva Foundation banana ehi si ke aurtha ate mardha ne vichkar jo ek behter taal mail hove ate kathe hi saare tarakki kariye. Naal hi jithe ne dasya apne baare ke ehi vakri vakri cabinet positions which kam kar chuke ne. Naal hi ina de call ina de manu bahut close hai natives de mudde. Kyunki ina da kena ke je koi colonize hoye hoye ta jis tarikhe na unhon dubaya gaya te hono bahar aare ne. ये साढ़े सारे ने फर्ज बनता है कि ऐसी सारे कठे राल मिलके कुछ ऐसा चंगा करिए जिसने सारे अंदी ग्रोथ होए एक ब्रेक ब्रेक तो बात वापस आ रहे हैं